Despite the loss, should the Lakers still feel good after losing game one? I wouldn't say, I mean, they shouldn't feel bad. I can tell you that much. The Jokic had 34, 21, and 14 for crying out loud. One seventy percent shooting. Give the man love credit and all of that other stuff. He was absolutely sensational. Jamal Murray was putting on his own show performing. The Lakers were down as much as 20 or 21, if I remember correctly. And the next thing you know, they come storming back. They pull within three. They were clearly in position to win this game despite the altitude, despite the slow start, despite, I mean, no, no matter how effective of LeBron James was, we know that he can be greater than what he was last night. And yet, this is the biggest thing. Anthony Davis, in the midst of Jokic putting on a show, Anthony Davis put on his own show. He dropped 40 last night, for crying out loud, in game one of a Western Conference Finals on the road. So you got to look at it from that perspective, and you got to say to yourself, hey, this is something that they should be happy about. But here's the biggest thing that they should be enthusiastic about. Jokic goes five for five and scores 12 points in the third quarter, continuing to put on the show that he had to put on display in the first half. And Darvin Ham switches to Rui Hachimura, defending him and basically allowing Anthony Davis to play free safety. From that point forward, Jokic shot like one for six, ended up with about two points in the fourth quarter, clearly wasn't as effective as he was in the first three quarters. So I think it's one of those situations where Darvin Ham and the Los Angeles Lakers may have found something there that Mike Malone will have to figure out because with Hachimura defending him and Anthony Davis being able to freelance to some degree, that was something that worked effectively for the Los Angeles Lakers. So I would say they don't really have a reason to feel bad. A loss is a loss. We get that part. But there is cause for optimism, no doubt about that. Well, uh, I would disagree. First off, Denver is 41-7 and seven at home on the year, uh -huh. and you only got four cracks to win a game there. They let one crack go away. Furthermore, if you look at the Laker pattern, they won game one against Memphis, then they won their home games. They won game one against Golden State, then they won their home games. They had 20-0 and 0 under LeBron. Well, LeBron is 20-0 and 0 when he wins the first game. They didn't win the first game here. Throw in the idea that they were outplayed for 44 minutes. Now, I understand Denver shut the lights out. I'll let J.J. bring the data up in a minute. But, I mean, they were unbelievable shooting the ball. I mean, big three by Jeff Green. Porter made tough shots. That probably, Pope, unbelievable. That's not going to happen necessarily again. But for 44, 44 minutes, the Lakers are down by double digits the whole game. They've won game one in all these series. Now they've lost game one. And Denver has lost seven home games all year. I thought this would be a long series, but I thought the Lakers could win in six. They'd have to win, of course, last night. I think Denver will get through in seven. And the idea, Steve, that in a short series, well, you get something out of a loss. There's no such things as losses. These are short series. You only got four cracks on the road. You never are satisfied with that loss. It's hard to come back from. So I think Denver in decent shape. Yeah, you're, you're making reasonable points here, Mad Dog. I'm not sure what happened in Austria. And also, is it, is it data or is it data? Is it data? No, it's data. It's, <laughs> it's data. data. See, data. Stephen A. Okay. does the same thing. They add R's, these New Yorkers. Data. All right. Uh, I'm no, not aware I, of I, that. Think, I think you can find some encouragement. I want to go back to LeBron's comments, though, in terms of the slow start. Uh, Lakers played great offensively in the second half. A lot of that start was bad offense. Uh, it was turnovers leading to transition points. Every single time Nikola Jokic got a defensive rebound in that first half, he would push the ball in transition. The Lakers were jogging back. So a lot of the comeback wasn't just the defense. It was the fact that the Lakers started making shots. Now, here's the data. Going forward, can you expect the Lakers to shoot 46% from three? Can you expect the Nuggets to shoot 45% from three? Probably not. Game to game, every game is a little bit different. But I do think the, the Lakers found something in that second half. Stephen A., you brought up Roy Hachimura, and I think it's important to note what exactly they were doing. So let's roll the tape right here because they switched Hachimura onto Jokic in that fourth quarter. You see the rip screen here into a post-up. Now I want you to watch Anthony Davis and Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon's over there in the dunker spot. It allows Anthony Davis to essentially be a free safety in Rome. And as Jokic gets into his move, it's the late help. LeBron James with a good sink. It leads to a turnover. The other thing is they targeted Jamal Murray. Two of the late threes from Austin Reeves are right here. Murray, not a great show. Lingers a little bit too much. Michael Porter Jr. has an opportunity to rotate and doesn't. They're going to continue to hunt Murray. LeBron scored on him three times in the first half against switches, 
and they're going to continue to look for ways to have Anthony Davis off the ball. Now, would that mean Hachimura plays Jokic for 40 minutes? Probably not. Maybe LeBron James guards him a little bit. And at times, yeah, Davis will have to guard Jokic one-on-one. Well, listen, that's good. That, that, that I appreciate that analysis, and that's something that the Denver Nuggets are going to have to figure out defensively. We get all of that because uh, the Lakers clearly have found something as well. I love the fact that you brought up those two threes that they surrendered to Austin Reeves because, again, they're going to continue to hunt Murray. You're absolutely right. But guess what? They better figure out a way to stop Murray, too, because he dropped 31. He hit 12 or 20 shots from the field. And by the way, Doggy, he's more than capable of doing that. We've seen him do it on many, many occasions, particularly in the postseason. Contavious Caldwell-Pope ain't some scrub. He's a champion. He helped the Los Angeles Lakers win the championship in the bubble. He finished with 21 points. He's fully capable of doing that. Michael Porter hit a big-time three from the left corner um, in the second half. We understand what he's capable of as well. The Lakers are going to have to figure out a way not just to stop Jokic or neutralize him to some degree because I think he's unstoppable, but they're going to have to do it with this offense because Denver has a a plethora of weapons to throw in your direction, and I think they showed that last night. What are the Los Angeles Lakers going to do about it? And remember, unlike Golden State, Denver's not undersized. When you look at Aaron Gordon, he's not easy to push around. Jokic, certainly, you're not going to push him around. Jamal Murray is not some small guard. Michael Porter is not some small dude. So they've got some size. Bruce Brown can't say enough about him either. These are guys that got size on them and are able to some degree to match the physicality that we saw the Lakers throw in the direction of Memphis, who was without Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, and of course the undersized Golden State Warriors. That's something we got to pay attention to. Is Jokic uh, the best player in the world? Uh, Nikola Jokic is the best player in the world right now. Right now. He's the best player in the world. Uh, let's go through his last four games real quick. Uh, Game four loss to the Phoenix Suns, 53 points and 11 assists. Follows that up with a 29-point triple-double. Follows that up with a 32-point triple-double. And then in game one against the Lakers, has a 34, 21, and 14-point triple-double. First player ever with 30-point triple-doubles and 70% shooting in consecutive games in NBA history. No one on the planet is a better basketball player than Nikola Jokic right now if you can argue that i i'm i'm very curious to see your argument you know jj jj reddick ladies and gentlemen congratulations to him you know because you know when when there are moments it is rare that you expect a moment where he makes you laugh you expect a lot of things from jj reddick you don't expect him to make you laugh but he made me laugh with this one not to discredit Jokic in any way but just how slick J.J. Reddick was, right now, right now, right now. Like, like on this date. Like on this date in history. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, right stop now. it. Hit it the the right now, right now, right now. He's the best right player now. in the NBA. Let me say this to you. Let uh, me you say know this what I mean, Stephen A. Stephen A. In I, this I, time I, period of the NBA, I don't mean today. You know what I are mean, you, Stephen A. I you, want to be clear on you, that. Are you interrupting me to get all serious, Top Gun? No, you you're, you're back accusing me of things. Are you going, are you going, you're you're going, accusing going, me of things. Relax. I'm not wait, wait to, literal on this Wait one. to I'm find out literal. what I'm accusing you of, okay? <laughs> Here's the deal, JJ. Seriously, seriously. I got it. Listen, you can make that argument. Let me throw this at you, though. I clearly cannot say that about Kevin Durant after what happened. I can't put it because you know how I feel about Kevin Durant. I can't say that about him right now, right? Um, Steph Curry is home. We know he's limited defensively. We get all of that, but sensational offensively. But he struggled in the last series. Giannis, I've always been suspect about his perimeter shooting, his free throw shooting. But here's the thing. Championships matter. And so with LeBron playing still against Jokic, I would say to you, You're not wrong, but can I hold off and reserve the right to judge this at the end of this series? Because if LeBron James knocks off Jokic and LeBron James has a series that's just as effective considering the savant that he is and the multitude of ways he can facilitate his team winning, not just scoring points, But all the things that LeBron brings to the table to help his team, his playmaking ability, 
his post game, his power game, his perimeter game, his ball handling skills, his exceptionalism in the open court, not to mention how he can step up defensively, not continuously, because Lord knows he gets burned quite often. But the fact of the matter is, uh, look at the breakaway. You know, you always got to look for him trailing when you're in the open court. Bruce Brown forgot about that last night. This is LeBron James. And so it is plausible and it is possible that at this moment in time, if Jokic falls to L.A., if, dare I say, he gets outplayed by LeBron James, are we going to be able to say that? I'm not so sure because the things that you praise Jokic about is what LeBron James has been doing for most, if not his entire career. That's all I'm saying about that. Jokic needs to get through this series and go to the finals before I'm willing to validate the proclamation that you just made, although it's not far-fetched. Is that fair, J.J. Reddy? Because I want to be fair to you, Top Gun. I want to be fair to you. Is it's, that fair? It's, it's totally fair that okay. I choose to live in reality and you choose to live in hypotheticals. It's totally fair. What do you mean hypotheticals? Did you just accuse me of hypotheticals with LeBron James? <laughs> Is that what you no, just no, said? No, 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 no. Is that what you, you just said? You talked about if LeBron James matches Nikola Jokic, and if the that, in that this is the series, of a high, in this high, series, high, in this series right here. But resume wise, you will concede that Jokic's resume doesn't compare to LeBron. Yet, Stephen A. You're talking about something. That well, hasn't it hasn't happened yet with Jokic. I'm talking about what has happened over the last three seasons. By the way, the whole Jokic. Uh, doesn't perform in the playoffs, lack of postseason success. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the roster Injuries. construction wasn't Injuries. perfect yes. around and Jamal him. Murray was we injured. have a 60-game yeah. sample size of Nikola Jokic in the playoffs. 60 games. And what do you have? And what do you have for LeBron 12, James? A meal at Friday? 52% from the field. What do you have for him? From three. I'm talking about right now, Stephen A. You're not listening. I'm talking about right now. We're not debating the greatest player of all time. I know you like to do that. We're talking about right now. Right I'm now, saying, Stephen A. Right now. Where's LeBron James been doing, walking around averaging 17, looking like he's ready to retire? Is that what you see for LeBron James? No. He's been balling, too. That's my point. Of course of course, he's been balling. Stephen A., it's, it's fluid. It's fluid. And there's levels to this. It's fluid. I got Chris, it. Chris, can you get in here, please? He got, yeah, he got me. Uh, Hold it. Chris, Mad Dog, yeah. he got me. He said it's fluid. It, when he, he said right. that, when he said that, he said it's fluid. I got it. And you're it. wrong. He's okay. right. JJ's right. Okay. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.